Christmas isn't about family. Christmas isn't about the festivities and the lights and the trees. Christmas isn't about the gifts we give and receive. Christmas is about Christ always will be, always should. Morning, evening, friends. I'm not quite sure when Mother is going to post the text, but we find ourselves on Christmas Eve and we're going to speak a bit about the various traditions that help us to not only better understand the wonder of the Advent, the birth, but to also better experience the beauty of Christmas Day itself. I think one of the first things that a lot of us look forward to during this time of festivity, during this time of Christ's birth, it's a privilege to once again be with family and friends. Be the long lost ones that we have not seen in quite a while. Be the ones that we maybe have seen too much. But just to bask in the fullness of love that we experience through our brothers and sisters, our mothers and our fathers, our aunts, our grandparents, etc. Each of us has got a different tradition with our family, I believe. Maybe it's the beauty of preparing food together, laying down a feast. Maybe it's the wonder of climbing in the car and driving down to see all the various Christmas lights. Maybe it's the privilege of going out and sharing that which we have with others. I think one of the core traditions most is that Christmas time is not spent on our own. It's a time of festivity as well. We get the trees, we get the lights, we get the ornaments. We listen to the music of Mrs. Mariah Carey. We celebrate. And why do we celebrate? Why do we grant ourselves and why do we believe God gives us the opportunity to be filled with joy? I think because most of the year we tend to be eaten up so much by the various responsibilities and tasks we need to fulfill that we do not realize that one of the core callings God has for us is just to be, just to live, just to have joy in the goodness of His creation and especially during the Christmas time. As we see all those around us living it out, it's as if the spirit within us wakes up once again. We laugh a bit quicker. We smile a bit easier. We hug a bit more. Of course, there's a third tradition as well. What is Christmas without the gifts? From the little toy car or doll that we got when we were little to the socks or perfumes we're just going to get as we get older. But why gifts? Why do we share? Why do we wrap? Why do we open up? Why do we give? Because more than anything else, what Christmas time is. It's a celebration, it's a reminder of the greatest gift that there ever was. The gift of God Himself. A gift that tells us how much He is willing to sacrifice. A gift that shows us who He sees. A gift that reminds us He is with us. Was with us. Will always be. These things look different for all of us, friends. We spoke about the beauty. We spoke about the privilege of if these things are present within our understanding and experience of Christmas. I've been speaking to those who have family, those who can have festivities, those who do have the privilege of exchanging gifts, as we know. That is not true for everyone, and it may be that it is not true for you as well. I want to 
tell you, friends, that as beautiful and wonderful as these traditions are, they still come secondary. Christmas isn't about family. Christmas isn't about the festivities and the lights and the trees. Christmas isn't about the gifts we give and receive. Christmas is about Christ, always will be, always should be. About the God that is with you wherever you may go. About the God that sees you when you are alone. About the God that holds you. So if Christmas time may not be a time of celebration, you but rather a time of sorrow may this Christmas be a time where God takes that sorrow and turns it into joy and even more so may be may this Christmas be a time when that sorrow which God has turned into joy becomes a source from which you share that joy with those around you